Hello everyone, welcome back to Lucky Crit. You guys have questions, I have answers. Starting off with... Green Panda 21 asks, what kind of DLC costumes would you want in three houses if it happens? Um, that's a good question. I think they did a good job with the Warriors costumes in terms of giving people a lot of different variety. They had the broken armor stuff for anybody that wants the, you know, I guess more scantily clad aspects to it. But they also did pick some cool outfits for other characters that were just different stuff, not necessarily, uh, you know, that type of stuff. So if Warriors is anything to look at, I think I'll be pretty happy with what we get with this. But uh, I think a lot of people would appreciate throwback costumes, kind of like they do in the Tail series. So I could definitely see that happening, somebody getting like a Marth costume or something like that. I think that'd be pretty cool. And I think it also would be even cooler if you can pick whatever character you want to have that particular costume, and if that can override any class. So I think that's kind of more what I'm concerned about, is how costumes would be utilized, and not so much uh, what we would get, because I'm sure we would get something pretty cool. Sweets asks, has he ever said who's his Fire Emblem Three Houses waifu? It's a good question. Um, it's pretty tough because I do actually really appreciate Edelgard, even though I'm not really considering doing Black Eagles, at least for the first playthrough. Um, I'm definitely going Blue Lions, I think. But I do appreciate Edelgard, and I actually do like the kind of whole slew of connections that are beginning to appear between Edelgard and uh, characters like Daenerys from Game of Thrones. So I think that's pretty cool. She definitely looks very uh, Mother of Dragons or Queen of Dragons in the time skip appearance that she gets. So. Um, there's something about that that I like. I've always kind of liked Edelgard, but I think if I had to pick one character in particular, Mercedes von Maltritz, I don't know. It's She just has that refined, elegant look. Um, so I think it's her for right now. Anubis asks, what is your favorite character in Three Houses so far? Another good question, another hard question, to be honest, because there's a lot of different characters that I already like, even though we don't know too much about them just yet, and I'm sure that'll change in time once we actually play the game and I develop deeper opinions on everybody. But I think off the top of my head, I'll probably end up saying, how about this? In this current moment, I'm thinking that Petra seems really, really cool. I'm really interested to hear about her kind of backstory or anything that we might get with her. She does seem to be a little bit like uh, Athena from Shadow Dragon, from Marth's games. Um, so I hope that we'll get a little bit more than kind of what we got with Athena, just being sort of a, uh, a foreigner with kind of a weird accent and that kind of stuff. Um, but I hope to learn more about her, and I hope that she's pretty cool, because I do like her a lot so far. I like the um, extra layers of depth that they have in her already compared to some of the other characters. But like I said, once we learn more, I'm sure that'll probably change. There's a bunch of characters I already like. I also really, really like uh, Lizithia. She's pretty interesting, kind of being like, almost more like the new Three Houses version of a character like Loot, maybe. Um, but less, less snarky, I think, so far. She just seems to be more normal, but she's a prodigy, and I'm sure that she'll be very, very useful. Um, not picking Golden Deer the first time around, but honestly, I would be lying if I told you that I wouldn't be tempted to pick her and uh, bring her over as part of the students that you can get from other houses, so we'll see what happens with that. Plast asks, have you ever played D&D, &D? and if so, what was it like? If not, would you want to? D&D um, &D was always kind of stigmatized as like that nerdy thing that people would play, and so I was never really super interested in trying it out. I did have friends actually in college that talked about it every now and again, um, but I was kind of like, nah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna play with that. Um, but actually, after coming back home from college, there was a friend in my home area that I hadn't really seen too much for a long time, and I felt kind of bad about that, and then I started doing YouTube and I saw him even less. Um, but there was a moment in time where he invited me to play D&D, &D, and I said, because uh, there was a local place downtown actually, that's actually pretty cool, they have a bunch of board games and stuff in there. And uh, so he invited me and I was like, all right, fine, you know, I'll go for this one time. I just want to show, you know, support for my friend and I'll have a good time with him and stuff like that. I don't know if I can make it a regular thing because to be honest, you know, everything's pretty super inconsistent and uh, I tend to be pretty busy with stuff, especially making videos like this. So um, I just figured it'd be a one-time thing, but we went and uh, and I also assumed that we'd probably have your typical group of like, you know, maybe people that didn't shower or like weren't that fun to be around. You know, I kind of had like the stereotypes in my mind, which is unfortunate. Um, I think it's actually becoming less stigmatized now because more and more, I guess, normal people sort of are kind of adapting to it and the people that are playing it are cooler these days, I suppose. Uh, maybe that's mean to say, but you know, it's, it's difficult when something is so stigmatized like that. But no, I, f I finally went and we played and uh, we ended up in a really, really cool group, like a better group than I ever imagined. And uh, it's been probably, 
probably like closing in on a year or something like that now. And so we did our first campaign with everybody. Eventually we started having to play online because people's schedules didn't line up anymore. And now it's like Sunday at like 10 in the morning, which I, to be honest with you, completely despise because I don't know why people don't sleep in on Sunday morning. Um, I mean, I do. <laughs> that's, that's what Sunday's for, in my opinion, on Saturday and Sunday. But yeah, so I hate the timing of it, but the group is awesome. Um, I decided to pick for my first time through, uh, I wanted something pretty simple. So I went with a basic kind of a generic paladin character, um, just your typical like good guy paladin. So he heals people. Um, but the funny thing is that he's actually pretty lucky and I usually end up critting a lot. <laughs> so the, the name's not really that, uh, it's actually pretty accurate in, the, in this case. So um, yeah, it's, it's fun. I've had a great time with it. And uh, I definitely think if that's something that you out there have been considering doing, definitely check it out. It can be fun. Obviously it depends on how good your DM is and how good your, your team is and stuff like that. But it's kind of, what I like about it the most, I think, is the interesting stories and scenarios that kind of happen and build naturally as you play. Um, it's kind of like if you've ever seen, you know, like Lord of the Rings and movies like that, but almost even more fun sometimes because no one could really think off the top of their head and create some of the crazy scenarios that just like naturally end up happening with your group of friends. The funny jokes that happen, the little inside things, it's, it's really amazing. And I think honestly, like a lot more shows that want to tell stories in the fantasy genre or area should probably play a game of D&D with their characters that they're trying to make for the show and use some of those scenarios that come about because of that. Because I just think it's just so great for ideas and cool little moments that happen. I think that's probably my favorite part about it. But yeah, it's a fun game. Uh, definitely get a good DM though. We have a good one, thankfully. He does character voices and all that kind of stuff and he actually does a good job. It's, it's pretty good. Weeb Trash Matthew asks, do you prefer the designs of the Three Houses Lords when they're younger or older? Um, that's a really good question. I think I have to say Claude is probably the only one who I don't really like so much when he's older. He definitely looks more refined, so I don't have any issues with it at all. But I'm definitely more of a, of a younger Claude fan, I guess I would say. Um, as for the other two, Dimitri's was just so out there that it blew me away um, that I honestly can't complain about it. It's a little sad, I think, to kind of see him ending up down that route because he really doesn't look like he's in the best mental state um, in the new trailer. I was so blown away by that that I'm kind of cool with it. It just like... Wow, you know, I, I really, really want to find out what happens to Dimitri to get him to that point. So that's going to be really cool. And I think Aelgard just naturally looks she, like she fits the part to be the Adrestian Emperor at that point in time. She looks great. She looks powerful. Um, so I think it's great. I like, you know, to be honest, I like all the designs so far for the characters. I think they're beautiful, they're gorgeous, and any that I don't like, I'm sure will grow on me with time. Like I've said in uh, other videos and in comment sections and stuff, I even actually like Lorenz's haircut pre-time skip. I think it's, I don't know, it, it doesn't bother me as much as other people. I think it's kind of interesting. He's kind of, he gives me that like Squidward motif or something like that. Um, which is also funny then because we can meme that too with uh, the beautiful Squidward from that other episode. But, you know, sorry for the environment. This is what you asked for when you want me to do it outside. So that's what you get. Interruptions all day. Vongola asks, what made you decide to start making YouTube videos for Fire Emblem in the first place? And what drives you to make those videos? Um... I actually had an older YouTube channel back in around, I probably made it in like spring 2009 or 2010, somewhere around there, near the end of high school for me. Um, it was a completely different channel and completely different subject matter. It's still out there. I'm not gonna reveal today what that channel was, maybe someday. Uh, it could be like a fun event or something to go back and watch some of that old content and probably cringe and stuff. But yeah, so that was kind of like the first time that I ever really tried doing YouTube. And the good thing about that was that it really primed me to be a lot better for this time around. Um, but with that, I kind of went away to college and my interests changed a little bit. So I wasn't really as into that topic anymore. And um, I got too busy really to keep making videos because college was just a lot of work. Um, you know, and I wanted to like socialize and have friends and stuff too. So I couldn't keep it up. And that's kind of why that channel died. And it sort of became like a summer thing for me for a couple years, but then Ultimately, I just kind of let it die, unfortunately. Yeah, but why I wanted to make this channel? You know, I don't know. I Originally, this was supposed to be a group channel with some friends, and we wanted to talk about a variety of different games and stuff, and over time, it just kind of morphed to mostly a Fire Emblem channel. I did always want to cover Fire Emblem on this channel, because I really do love Fire Emblem, and uh, that's actually where the name Lucky Crit was from when I was first thinking about names to, you know, as the concept for the branding of the channel. But naturally, it just kind of became mostly Fire Emblem oriented, and I don't have any issues with that at all. You'll see that every once in a while, I still do try to branch out and do some other games and other stuff like that, and uh, have a good time there. 
because I think that's kind of important too, especially, you know, if let's say Three Houses doesn't do well or something, which I don't, I don't think that's going to happen at all. But, you know, if that ever were to happen with Three Houses and then Fire Emblem somehow died and like never had a new game, I mean, something would have to happen with this channel. I'd have to go somewhere else with it. So um, we'll see. But I don't think it's going to happen. I'm just kind of saying like, overall, I didn't expect this to be a mostly Fire Emblem channel, but I have no complaints about that. I really do like Fire Emblem. So um, that's that. But as for why I wanted to, I don't know. I just kind of always felt like I wanted to go back to YouTube. There's something very interesting with what happens when you are a YouTuber. The feeling of creating something, when you're uploading it, you have that kind of anticipation waiting for that video to go out to see what people think about it. Um, it's just such a rewarding experience too, when you finally put it out and people like what you made and they start supporting you and watching your videos and stuff. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy to think that like any video that I upload, no matter what video it is, I've probably already gotten at least 100 people that are watching that video within 10 minutes. And uh, that's just, it blows my mind every time. Sometimes even thousands of, of views within the first like 10 minutes, 30 minutes. It's amazing, it's incredible. And um, to think that you guys enjoy the content that much, I'm just really, really humbled. And it's also really fun. Uh, I've never really considered myself to be the type of person that wants to end up in a nine to five job. I'll do it if I have to, but at the same time, with all the experiences that I've had so far, especially with the most recent one, which was a really, really great job, ultimately it's like, I kind of feel like I'll be the most fulfilled in life if I create my own path and try to make my own business and be my own boss. And I think I would be the happiest that way. And I also think that I'd feel the most fulfilled in life managing to create something like that instead of just working for someone else. So that's kind of the other thing. And I also just kind of felt like there was space in the Fire Emblem community still. I still remember way back in the day, probably around, I don't even know, somewhere in the late 2000s, I want to say, I was browsing the internet looking for anything like Fire Emblem related. I looked on YouTube for Fire Emblem stuff and there was barely anything, like no content creators at that point in time. And I just remember wondering like why, like why weren't people talking about Fire Emblem? These games were great. I was playing them. I wanted to like invest more in the series, but there was just nothing around. And I was kind of confused about that. Um, thankfully, by the time I created this channel, there's a lot of great Fire Emblem YouTubers out there that are here uh, before me and still do stuff. So that's awesome. And the community is really, really growing and exploding. So I think that's really, really cool. And I'm kind of stoked about that. It's really great. But overall, I just kind of fell into it a little bit too, because I really wanted to share my thoughts on Fire Emblem Echoes when it was first announced in 2017 with that uh, Fire Emblem Direct because I knew a lot of people that especially were kind of newer to the series, maybe played Awakening or Fates or just one or the other, um, they wouldn't know that Echoes was a remake of Gaiden, and they wouldn't really know what to expect with Echoes, especially if, you know, they were going to stay true to everything from Gaiden. It was going to be very, very different than the other games that they had experienced so far, and they did stay very true to it. Um, so I wanted to start making content to kind of hopefully get people prepared mentally for that idea, for it to be different, and just kind of show people what to expect from it uh, because of Gaiden. Because Gaiden was kind of the black sheep of the franchise, did a lot of different stuff. Since then, we've gotten features from Gaiden and stuff sprinkled throughout many of the newer games, so it's not really that big of a deal. Um, but back in the day, I mean, going from Fire Emblem 1 to 2 is such a weird, different change. And it's kind of like that for a lot of Nintendo's IPs, like Zelda and stuff too. Zelda 2 is very strange. Uh, it's the side-scroller, like, dungeon crawler weird thing, yeah. Yeah, sorry, that was a long answer, but I think that kind of answers it. Just kind of fell into it, but I love the series and uh, I wanted to share my thoughts on it and hopefully help people know what to expect from some of the new stuff coming out. Spiral asks, what are your thoughts on the recent ruling by the Belgian government to ban Fire Emblem Heroes and other gacha titles in their country? So I think what they did was they actually marked gacha as uh, gambling and they, made, they outlawed that, but it was Nintendo's choice ultimately to pull the plug on all of those games in Belgium and actually just not not adapt anything, not change anything. Because to be honest, a lot of those games, they could have, maybe they would have lost money because there would be no real way to get characters and stuff like that. I don't know, they'd have to come up with a new uh, like price proposition for the game. Maybe people would have to pay the game upfront. Nintendo and Intelligent Systems and all the companies, I guess, just didn't really want to do that. So they decided ultimately to just pull out of Belgium and now uh, you know rip Fire Emblem Heroes players in Belgium. Yeah, it's, it's tough. Gacha games, I can definitely see the dark side to gacha games. It's very easy to get lost in it and to spend more money than you're anticipating. Um, it's definitely happened for me. So there is a badness to it, but at the same time, I do want to say 
There is also a lot of really cool stuff that you can get for free from a lot of these games. You know, hard hours of work and effort from developers and everybody behind the scenes, and you can play for free, and you don't really have to spend any money at all. And in fact, I think some of the most uh, impressive players and impressive accounts that I've seen are F2P accounts, because it's the people that really care about the game, really love the game, plan out their stuff so that they make wise decisions in the long term, and they're very frugal with their fodder and their other things that they have to save up, so... Um, Ultimately, I don't know, it's it's a hotly debated topic, and I can definitely see both sides on it. I don't particularly think that it should be banned, as long as people know what they're getting into. And I think that the game should be, uh, in some cases, a little bit fairer and a little bit nicer to players. I think sometimes they start to push it with how they try to manipulate and push and pull little things to get people to spend a bit more here and there. Um, but I don't think it should be outright banned. And uh, my heart goes out to all those Belgian players that can no longer play, or probably have to emulate and try to play another country's version of the game. Yeah. Green Panda 21 asks, Between all the Fire Emblem continents and worlds, Alibe, Yggdral, Elise, Valentia, etc., which one would you want to live in if you had to choose one? This is a tough question, too. I think it would all depend, for me, on uh, which one had the most beautiful kind of tropical area. That's, that tends to be what I like. I like the coastline, I like the shore and the ocean. And I think out of all of those, you see, Echoes, Valentia definitely does have it, but they also have, you know, dungeons full of, like, creepy crawlies and monsters and stuff, so I don't know that I want to live around there. And a lot of the land, especially, like, uh, in Zofia, tends to be very rural, small towns and villages, I don't know. It, it's kind of like there's nothing there, like wasteland almost. So I'll probably end up saying, I think, you know, Alive had a lot of really beautiful port towns and stuff like that. A lot of nice maps with pirates out in the water and stuff. I'm going to say that for now. I might change my mind at some point, but yeah. Coastal. Some, somewhere with a pretty coast. Mage Knight Blazer asks, Do you think we will get any DLC for extra characters in Fire Emblem Three Houses? This is a great question, and I think something to definitely consider going into Fire Emblem Three Houses. It's a distinct possibility that it might happen, um, so prepare yourself for that. We did see this with Fire Emblem Echo Shadows of Valentia. There were a couple DLC characters. They weren't necessary or anything, they were just kind of interesting to have. And the characters were based upon Fire Emblem Cypher characters. They were the Fire Emblem Cypher original characters that weren't ever in any games before that. So that was kind of like more of a collaboration type of deal than it was like, you know, taking a couple extra students that they made and locking them behind a paywall. It didn't really feel so much like that. But I could see that happening, actually, for three houses at this point. They know that with heroes, people will pay money to summon for new heroes and stuff, new exciting characters. Um, so I definitely think that it is a possibility. And hopefully they'll just kind of add and, and flesh things out even more if we do get something like that. And I think what I'm most concerned about, though, is the price proposition. Like, price it fairly if you're going to do that. Um, but I wouldn't be too upset if they did it, as long as the characters weren't, like the best characters, and it felt like they straight up just cut them out of the game and put them as DLC. Um, but aside from that, yeah, I think it'll be okay if they do if they go that route. Obviously, no word on that just yet, but we'll see what happens. Cody asks, so I just ate like three ice cream sandwiches and honestly have a bunch of random Fire Emblem related questions, blah, blah, blah. Number one, opinion on amiibo units. Would you rather them work like they did in Warriors, Echoes, or Fates? This is a great question. Um, I'll be honest with you, I don't think anybody really wants them to work like they did in Echoes. Echoes was where they basically came to your side as a uh, an assist unit, basically, for one turn, and they were just kind of like ghostly versions of like Marth and Roy and stuff. Um, I don't think that was the best way. I think pe what people really want is it for it to work like Fates. They want to play Three Houses, scan their amiibo, and then be able to recruit Marth as a student into their house. Um, and there's definitely a part of me that feels like that would actually be really cool to bring back some of the old characters like that. But, it, you know, they can't really create new supports for all these characters because it doesn't really make sense for them to be within this time in this world or whatever. So, that, like, that's going to be limited. They're going to be, like, hus husks of themselves no matter what. And um, I, I don't know. I would definitely be down for that if they did that. But I do have to say that it doesn't really look like that's going to be the case. Um, I think so far what we've been kind of hinted at is the fact that it might seem like if you scan like an Iker Marth Amiibo or something like that, maybe you might get a throwback weapon to that character. So that could be a, a cool little exclusive thing for you to get. And I'm okay with that, but I know that that will disappoint a lot of people because there's a lot of things with the characters that they love to play with and stuff like that and, and would want them in their house. So I can definitely see that. Um, I think ultimately that would be the best way to go about it. I just unfortunately don't think that they will. And at the end of the day, they can't really still be the full version of that character anyway because they don't really belong in that time and that place and they'd have to kind of create new 
plot reasons or backstories for that character for them to be there and it just is kind of confusing to make it all work but ultimately i know most people would want the fates way to go about it and i kind of agree with that too Number two, would you like units from the story to come back in the end like they did in Sacred Stones or like they did in Awakening? Um, so at the end of Sacred Stones, in the creature campaign, if you do a lot of the more hard dungeons in the game, you can actually unlock some of the enemy characters that you ended up defeating throughout the whole time. And uh, I really, really liked that. I thought that was such a cool prospect. Really made you want to go and beat all those dungeons and get even more characters into your army. And even characters that you just never had a chance to use that you might have thought were super cool. Awesome enemy general characters and stuff. So I really, really liked that concept and I would love to see that come back, to be honest. As long as the enemies are cool in three houses, because otherwise we're not going to care so much. Like, Flame Emperor, I don't really care to recruit Flame Emperor. But, you know, if like Rhea ends up being evil and you can recruit her in the post game, that would be sick. I'd be totally down for that. Number three, do you think past Fire Emblem characters will be referenced in the new games, like Ephraim, Marth, Erica, and Elawood? Um, probably not, but sometimes they will put a little throwback here and there. Maybe talk about other continents, like Valentia and stuff like that. Maybe you'll find a book somewhere. They always, there's always like a little something somewhere that kind of harkens back to things, but not usually too on the nose or over the top about it, I don't think, so probably not. Ratty asks, what other game franchises outside of Fire Emblem have you been wanting to talk about if you could? Um, this is a great question. There's a lot of videos that I actually really do want to make. I have even videos that are on hold that I haven't finished uh, for some other games. But I do really want to get back to the What Happened To series that I used to do on this channel. I talked about Golden Sun and Advance Wars in that series. And some of the other games that I'd like to talk about with those videos are probably going to be like Yggdra Union for the Game Boy Advance. Um, that was a really cool series. And I think they even spawned off into other games for like the PSP in Japan. And we just never saw them here in the West, which thinks. Um, but those were really cool, actually. Um, another series I'd love to talk about is Final Fantasy Tactics. Those games are great. Kind of just more old-school classics that I grew up playing that I would love to share. Mega Man Battle Network. I know we got some fans of that out there. Um, so more games like that I would love to talk about, absolutely. People have been begging me to talk about Tales games and the Tales series for a long time. I even, like, half-recorded something when I first started playing Tales of Zestiria. But that was a very long time ago, and I ended up losing, or some of the footage ended up not working out, so I kind of scrapped that and halted that. Uh, but at some point I'll talk about Tales, a, a bunch of things. There's, there's a lot of other stuff to talk about too every now and again. The channel will remain a Fire Emblem channel, but every now and again I do like to spice it up by throwing in something in there. Renegade asks, what era should Advance Wars return in, traditional end of the world or in space? Um, I'll be honest with you, I did like Days of Ruin with its more futuristic gritty look and you know feel to the game, but overall it, that's not the Advance Wars that deep down I know and I love. And so I really would just love a return to form and going back to the cartoony, happy, smiley, uh, you know, Andy and company from the first game. Advance Wars 1 and 2 are my favorites by far. I never really played Dual Strike for the DS, unfortunately. And I think the first two are kind of just more classic in my opinion anyway. But even the graphical style in Advance Wars 2 is like, it loses a little something between the first and the second games. The first game, it's even more cartoony. Most of the sprites, let me be clear, most of the sprites do stay the same between the two games. But stuff like the buildings and stuff, the environment, the scenery, it changes a little bit and it kind of like, it's not that it makes it look generic, but it, it cleans it up a little bit and makes it look more standard and there's just a fun like weird cartoony vibe to the first game that I just really love so I would like to go back to there to be honest with you I wouldn't have any problems if the game came back and it was just completely different now you know modernized or something or if it was like a days of ruin 2 um, I'd have no issues with that I'd probably still play it and love it but at the same time I do like cartoony Andy and company doing everything so that was fun Weep Trash Matthew asks if you had to cosplay both a male and female character from Fire Emblem who would you choose and why um, I don't know why I have to pick one of each but I'll be honest, I, you know, I just don't think I have the, the face to pull off a bunch of ridiculous wigs and stuff. I, don't, I just think it looks so like cringy on me, so I would probably never really do something like that. Um, you know, unless I'm trying to make it a joke in the first place. I think I would probably end up picking a character that looks more like me to begin with. Um, I don't know, I'm trying to think of characters that I kind of look like. I could probably pull off Barst if I worked out a little bit more and then dyed my hair like blue or something. Um, maybe that, or you know, like Border Cord or somebody like that. But I'm trying to think, there's probably other characters that I look like too. You can let me know in the comment section down below who you think I look like. But I would probably pick somebody that I already pretty much look like and just kind of don the outfit if I ever had to do that. At least for a male character. For a female character. I don't know, I don't, <laughs> I don't know that I would be in that situation in the first place, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't even have an answer for that. Probably a pretty manly female character, hopefully. Maybe I could do Sully. Just put a toilet bowl thing around my head, dye my hair red. 
Sully. Sully it is. Killed by a 1% crit ass. As a Fire Emblem fan, do you feel that it would have been better for the experience of the first playthrough had the time skip not been revealed in the latest trailer? This is something that I've actually been thinking about myself because it was just so out of left field for them to announce that and to share that. Some people did know about it already because of the leaks, and it turns out that um, at least for the most part, it seems like the leak has been pretty much confirmed. However, you can never trust leaks 100% because a lot of people end up throwing in bullet points here and there that they just kind of made up off the top of their head. Maybe to kind of um, save themselves a little bit by putting some fake information in there too, some misinformation. Um, but at least for a majority of it so far, it does seem like the leaks were correct. So some people did already know about the time skip. So in my opinion, I think that for all the people that spoiled it for themselves there to begin with, um, they weren't going to be surprised no matter what. And that was probably a pretty good portion of people that are pretty active online for Fire Emblem, I think. Um, but I know there's a lot of people that don't want it spoiled at all. They won't even watch my recent videos because we've gotten to the point where it's kind of like... You'll know a lot about the game going in if you keep watching my, you know, modern Fire Emblem uh, Three Houses content that'll be coming out. And I definitely love that and understand that, by the way. For anybody that wants to go in blind, have fun. I hope that you really love the game. Um, I, you know, there's a part of me that does agree with you and think that... If we just played the game, like, imagine playing blind and then getting to a certain point where the time skip happens. So many people would just be blown away from the story, not expecting that to have come back from genealogy. You know, there would be so many people that were, would be so hyped and excited. You see so many tweets going out of people when they finally got to that point in the game. Um, I think it would have been awesome, but at the same time, I also feel like the game needed to rebuild a lot of hype you know the time between the first and the second trailer was really really long and a lot of that hype had died down and so a lot of people weren't even really excited with that first trailer because we kind of really didn't see all that much of the game and even the, the second trailer was fine but that really kind of built off of the first trailer in that sense kind of showed us more about the Garrick Mach Monastery and then this trailer just completely blew everything out of the water by revealing the time skip so to be honest I, can't, I think it kind of was a really good marketing tool to drum up more hype in the lead up to the game, because I think even more people are super excited now to see what how everything turns out, what happens to some of the characters between the time skip and stuff like that. That's definitely getting me. I can't wait to see what happens to Dimitri. But yeah, there is a part of me that does feel like a first blind playthrough. Like people a couple years from now who get into Fire Emblem, miss all of this stuff, and just start playing Three Houses like casually and get to that point their minds are going to be blown, and I think that's going to be really awesome to see, and I hope that some of those people record those reactions, because if it's anything like Gas's reaction to uh, Shadows of Valentia being announced, they're going to make beautiful videos. It's going to be awesome. So yeah, I definitely see where you're coming from, and I do agree with you, actually. Um, but at the end of the day, I do feel personally like we did need a little bit more of a hype boost up to the release of the game to get everybody super excited for it, and I kind of think that that was the way to do it. And I think they did a great job of that, so yeah. That's where I'm going to wrap this up for today. I hope that I answered you guys' questions. There's a lot more questions in there to get to, so I'll definitely be making more videos like this in the future. If you have more questions for me, you can leave them in the comment section down below, or join us on Discord and put them in the Ask Stevie channel, um, and I'll definitely be sure to read through those, check those out, and do future videos like this. So I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed the environment and the scenery. You asked for it, maybe next time I'll, uh, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see where the next one ends up. But thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed this. And I hope it was fun to at least listen to or something like that. If you enjoyed it, do me a solid and slash the thumbs up down below. And I'll catch you guys in the next one of these. See you later.